What is up, Fox Body fans? Hey, welcome to part three of the On Three Turbo Kit install on my Fox Body Mustang. of the on three turbo kit installation on our 86 fox body mustang i'm glad you're here welcome to the channel so as you know if you've watched part one and part two basically all i've done is i've ran the oil feed we've taken care of the oil lines the oil feed line to the turbo uh, we've put on the uh the water filler neck from a vortex uh, supercharger here relocated the alternator um and put fuel injectors in it um man what else have we done we've done a whole bunch of stuff we test fit the entire hot side onto the onto the engine, bolted it all up along with the turbo so I could take it all off and then send it off to the ceramic coating. So I have been waiting diligently to get these stuff back from the uh, ceramic coating place. So um, it took about three weeks-ish, a little two and a half weeks or so to get them back. So I haven't done a whole lot. I haven't made a video since only because I really am ready to start doing the install. This one is going to be cool. This video is great because we actually can install parts and leave them on the car. Okay, let me go ahead and show you guys everything we've done already. Uh, I'm trying to make it as quick as possible, but we have the oil drain into the side of the oil pan. We have the oil feed line that's been ran, so that's going off the T in the side of the block that ON3 provides here. And again, if you missed this, guys, just go back and watch part one and part two. We cover all this. I've got the 90 degree elbow. That's the Ford Racing oil filter elbow relocation kit. I've got that done. We installed the alternator bracket relocation. That comes with the on three kit as well as a much shorter belt to accommodate um, the change in the serpentine system here. Um, I've also put in a 90 degree elbow on the fuel pressure regulator or the fuel pressure gauge. If you saw part two, you know that we had a lot of wiring in the way. So I took care of some of that. What I did do was rerun the starter cable. It was initially coming right off the solenoid down and in your stock location along the front of the engine to the starter that has since been relocated now to inside the fender wheel around the k-member and then up to the starter that way so you can see it going up through here now along with the activator wire that hugs the groove um, inside the k-member and is zip tied on nice and neat up and out of the way so that's going to the starter on this side um, that removed the starter cable so it's no longer in the way i've also got a ground cable that was going directly and i'll show you again here Directly here, this is my my ground cable I made for it, guys because I do have a wire tuck as you can see I have wire tucked it the ground cable goes to a stud that's been welded here onto the fender or the inner fender I'm sorry, it's just a bolt. I didn't weld this stud in there, but nonetheless it is a thick cable that goes here There's a full-size cable that goes all the way back To another ground in the trunk and then to the battery and then we got another one You know coming off of this that's going down here and then this has been moved out of the way It was initially going straight this way, which is going right into the uh, the driver's side turbo header. So that got it out of the way and that's cool. Head and ran heat shielding on the clutch cable. Now guys, you, you can remove this cable completely uh, from the clutch itself or from the clutch pedal and from the clutch and take, take it out and do it. I didn't do that. I didn't think it was necessary. I simply just removed it from the bell house off the clutch fork, pulled it out this way, um, slipped it on. Of course, you had to uh, remove your bracket, bend this off to take your bracket off, slide this over it, and then um, put it all back in. And I went ahead and bent this back. That needs to be tightened up still, but I went ahead and bent this back so it is nice and out of the way of the header as well. Um, if you also go back and watch part two, you'll see that we installed this Vortec upper radiator hose. This is a nice piece. It's got a 45 degree elbow in it. Um, it's really good because it gets it out of the way. And as you can see, it's not touching anything. There's a nice gap between here and the alternator bracket kit that comes with on three. So this is a good piece. We installed that and got that taken care of. So let's go out back. Let me just show you the goods, man. All right. So we got them back finally from the ceramic coating, guys. I can finally get to work on this thing, and I'm so excited to get to work on it today. No idea. Um, I got this done from Specialized Performance Coat out of Arlington. These guys did a phenomenal job. They do take two to three weeks, and only because they take their time doing it to do it right. As you can see, the it is a true ceramic coat, um, but it has been nicely, nicely polished. So these look really good. This will turn your on three kit. 
into something that's a little bit nicer. So these look really good and we're gonna get the both nose on today. Without further ado, let's continue on this build guys. Let's get to it and start bolting on the hot side for a final installation of the hot side and the turbo. That means we can finally plumb the oil, run it to it, we can run the drain to it, and then we can really start pulling the bumper out and get ready to put on the cold side. Finish, finish this build up, hopefully. Not today, but we'll get a good start on it today and we can really get some progress going and get this thing back on the road. Boost. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I haven't had a chance to do this yet, is really clean off the old gaskets. So I'm gonna save the, uh, the boring footage, save you guys from watching me scrape off gaskets, but I am gonna get all this gasket material off the heads and just gotta get them prepped and ready to uh, install the turbo headers. Okay, you got the head surfaces pretty clean. Actually it looks really good. Kind of hard to pick up on camera here. Okay guys, make sure you get every single bit of gasket material off. Okay, we're gonna start on the driver's side. First thing I'm gonna do is get everything out of the way to make sure I have enough room to fit this. If you're doing this by yourself, this is where an extra set of hands really does help. But if you're doing this by yourself, make sure you have a plan of attack. So what we're gonna do first is make sure this AC cable is <laughs> it's completely out of the way. It keeps folding over. What I'm gonna do is push out of the way and zip tie it so that I have all the room possible to give myself ample room to fit it in. What we're gonna do is just kind of test this, fit this a couple times so I know about how I'm gonna do this because you only have one chance to do this right without getting silicon absolutely everywhere. Okay, like my buddy Justin91LX and also like Donnie B as well as many others in the North Texas Fox Body Club, they are using this as their gasket. So they are taking these stock gaskets or any kind of gaskets, throwing them away completely, chunking them in the trash, and using pure RTV. Now when I called on three, I did ask them what they thought was best to use for a gasket material. And they did say what they typically do is take a stock Ford motor, uh, Motorcraft gasket and or a good Felpro gasket and then put a layer of this on each side of it to make sure it seals. I think both work really good. We're gonna try just this route because like I said before, Everyone I've talked to, have had, this is one they've used. And unfortunately, when you've never done something before and you have really no experience, the best thing you can do is go off with guys who have done this before and can help you out the most they can. So what I've got here is Ultra Copper RTV. This stuff will handle high temps. Um, of course, if it gets too hot, then it will blow out. So you wanna be careful. But like I said, this is what we're gonna try. And uh, we'll go ahead and put this onto the header and let it set before we stick this guy in. Okay, another thing, another tip, that you want to do, and this is something you should know if you've installed headers before at all, is make sure you've got the bolts ready to go in with you, near you, and also go ahead and get the bolts started first on your bin. So anything closest to a tight bin, which would be here and on there, and really this side is pretty straight, maybe on this side, but most importantly, this guy right here, you want to go on ahead and get this bolt ready, because the last thing you want to do is cinch it down on the ends here, there, and on this other side to make sure that you cannot get this bolt in. You have to back it out. You may screw up your gasket a little bit. So. Okay, same with the passenger side. We're gonna get an angle of attack. It should slide in just like this. Okay, so getting the header in on the passenger side is actually really simple. I'm gonna slip it through this way and bolt it right up. However, I do wanna talk real quick about my AC lines. I didn't have a chance to do this in my last video. So this one I found a good spot for it. I've tucked it nice and neat behind the alternator and spun it this way. We'll be able to run a zip tie or something similar to really hold it up against this bracket and get this guy out of the way. So I'm not worried about this one. 
I've also, you can see here, bent it a little bit more towards this way to get this angle out. And on this one as well, I've also bent out this way to get this line up behind this channel. So that's what we're working on now. You really wanna get this out of the way. Let me show you how close the header fits to this AC line right here, whenever you stick it into the, uh, the fender well. Go on right here. And as you can see, this section, once it's up, it's gonna be bolted right, right there. That, that AC line is already touching the header of this point, you know, on this point right here. This section right here, we may be able to wrap, but that's not in a good spot. There's no way to get that out of the way without really, really mangling or bending the lines. Uh, the best solution would be to go underneath this header completely. And unfortunately, I just don't have uh, the lines to do that. So, man. Okay, after much debating myself and wasting a ton of time looking at this, I've decided to remove the line. Now, don't worry, nothing came out of this. This system has been long sucked out. I've got a leak in it, and it's been slowly leaking all winter, so there's nothing in it. Um, no oil, nothing came out of this at all. But anyways, um, I went ahead and disconnected it from here and there, and we moved it over there. Basically, what I've come, what I've realized is there's absolutely no way that I can run this with that line not melting. I have to take this to a shop and get that line custom made and rerouted. All right, time to put it in the passenger side. Now remember to get your bolt ready here. That is your tightest curve. You wanna make sure you have the bolt in this one because it's gonna be hard to get in. So we'll start with this guy and um, we'll put another one just to cinch it up. And anything with a big curve, we'll make sure we get ready. Now that all eight bolts are in, we're just going to go ahead and tighten this one here first. So the header is just right now leaning back on itself. Lift it up. Start tying it towards the head. Now I'll place the gas completely the surface. Same with the other side of the crossover pipe. I went ahead and put some copper RTV on the V-band surface. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the ball joint as is. That one should seal as well as long as it's tight, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Worst case, I'll just pull it off and put some new on it, I guess, or maybe we could put a small bean on it. But um, anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and get this guy bolted in. Everything is still kind of loose, even on the other side of the crossover pipe. That way we can make sure everything fits before tightening it all up, sealing it up. Okay, guys, the hot side piping is on. I apologize, I didn't record all of tightening this down. Um, it is on, it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the underside real quick. Okay, there she is. Okay, it is going to be a small victory to put the turbo on. I cannot wait, I'm excited because we finally get the bolt on permanently. The turbo thing it's going to give us boost and power. That's cool. So let's go ahead and put on the oil feed up on the top here, the feed line, and the oil drain line. So on three gives you everything you need here. So we've got the drain that simply bolts on with the uh, matching gasket for it there. We have the feed line that bolts on also with the matching gasket. You've got bolts, Allen head bolts here, and you've got some. Um, hose clamps to hold on to the uh, drain feed line, or the drain line. So we're going to get that on and start this. We'll flip this over like so. And I'll go ahead and pop off the cap. We're going to lay, actually let's wipe it down first. We're going to lay the gasket on. And I'm just going to go put a little bit of red Loctite on these guys before we stick them in. Make sure this isn't back out. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't want, so I don't want any of these backing out. There are the bolts here. Okay, now we'll flip it over and put on the feed line. Send 
deal. I'll pop this cap off. Okay, now I want to be kind of ready here. I know that this is turned like this in order to put the bolts in. Once it's in place, we're going to want to tighten it down and uh, make sure this is pointed the direction we want it to be pointed to. But first, you do want to make sure that it's like this to get the bolts in. So we'll go ahead and place the gasket on. Lock, a little bit of lock tight on here. Cinch these guys down nice and tight. You can see a clocking. See, I've got it loose here because we're going to clock it. Now let's go ahead and flip it over. I'm going to clean this surface with some acetone, and then we'll, we'll do the same thing we did. We'll put some copper RTB around the surface here and place it on to the motor. Okay, the turbo is in. So that's a good milestone, man, right? It's pretty good. So now we're going to clock it. What we got, what I mean by clocking the turbo is we're going to loosen these guys up. Here, there's bands on the front on both sides of the turbo housing. So you got one here. So these bolts here allow you to spin, basically rotate this guy. And right now, it's loose enough where you, you can because when it's shipped, this thing was pointed directly at the alternator. So see how I can spin it. So same deal with the uh, turbine housing itself. So what we have to do is just loosen up these around here. And this, you do want to take them out, just loosen up where you can spin this whole cast piece. The whole cast piece along with this oil feed line will now rotate as well. And when that rotates, it'll allow me to point this straight up and down. So this is your feed line. If you go to the side here, you'll see how crooked it is right now. So if I were to run it just like this, it'd be clocked this way. The oil drain would come on the top and it would just pull on the bottom. It's got to go straight through the turbo, feed oil to the bearings, and go straight out. You want continuous flow through the bearing and journal bearing of this turbo. If it's clocked like this, what it causes is the, the oil to pull to one side or the other. And that when it pulls, that oil will get really, really hot, overheat, burn, and essentially cause the turbo to burn up and seize. So you will damage and ruin your turbo if this is not clocked correctly. So again, guys, make sure that this feed line is directly straight up and down. That'll ensure that the feed line goes straight through the turbo and down to the drain into the oil pan. Happy Sunday. It is absolutely perfect outside. It is a beautiful day to be working on the car to continue work on it. So let's continue with it. And let me show you where we left off yesterday. We are clocking the turbo. So what I was having to do is loosen all these bolts up. So learn from my mistakes. It's a benefit of watching these videos is that I get to teach you about the mistakes I ran into before you go out and do it yourself. Make sure you loosen up your bolts to your turbo, the clock it, while it's on the bench, not when it's on the car, because there are six, or six bolts total three on each side and the third bolt down here on the bottom is very difficult to get to while the turbo is on the car. But once these are loose you can see that it allows you to twist the cast section here to clock it. So what I've also ran into is while this is 90 degrees up and down all the way up like this I just started kissing the drain valve right up against the turbo housing which is right there. I know it's hard to see but it is basically touching the, uh, the cast part of the flange of the turbo housing. So you want to make sure you guys get this nice and tight too and make sure you get that hex bolt out of the way because if the hex is turned where the star shape is right up against the housing it will bump and hit it. You want to make sure you get the flat part. So I still need to resolve that. Um, and also while I did that I noticed that the drain valve itself was loose so please make sure you tighten up that drain valve on the bench before just sticking the plate on and thinking it's good to go. Same case being with the uh, 90 degree oil feed line here. This is also installed loose and you can see I've tightened it up. So this is tight and ready to go but make sure you tighten up both the, uh, <laughs> the valves itself or the uh, fittings themselves into the plates on the oil feed and the drain line before you go putting the turbo on the car like I did. This is the piece I'm talking about, your drain valve here. The star shape is just, just out enough where it's hitting right here. So I've tightened this down all the way and what I, do, what I need to do Instead of grinding this down, I could just grind this down so it doesn't touch the turbo housing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just rotate it just slightly so that the hex part is flat up against the edge here. and Hopefully it won't rub against the, uh, the housing when it's like that. Put it 
down nice and tight. There's no need to put any kind of uh, seal on this. These will seal themselves. Now this is clocked, we're just gonna go ahead and tighten these back down. Okay guys, the drain drain tube is on, so it has been zip tied up against here. There's no way to get a hose clamp there. It is zip tied, it's not going anywhere, it's super tight. And I've also got a hose clamp going up to the engine block. I went ahead and trimmed the hose down about that much, just to give a little bit of a tighter fit. So continuing on, we're probably gonna go ahead and put on the D-locks on the headers. Get ready to put the downpipe in. The D-locks are for my stage eight um, header bolts. These keep from backing out. So these are great little header bolts. All right, man, let's go ahead and get the wastegate installed. So the wastegate comes with, well, your wastegate comes with the V-band clamp, which is a nice quality little piece. And it comes with the piece, the other section of your V-band clamp, and it comes with the fire ring. So there's nothing to this, guys. We just need to go ahead and put the fittings on the front and side. This is the bag of fittings, of course. What you'll do, put these guys on. We'll put one on the top and on the bottom. We want to put a washer, a crush washer on first. Slip it through one of the fittings. Put another crush washer on and thread it on. Same with the side. We'll want one right here on the side. Okay, you want to make sure you have your fire ring on correctly. So the fire ring is this ring right here. Notice the beveled edge on the inside of it. You want to make sure that goes down along the beveled edge inside the gate itself. So this will slip right in like so. It also comes with this piece here, which you won't use. This is a weld on bung if you need to put it or change it or actually you're installing one yourself. Um, but Don 3 kit, the hot side already has this ring welded on. So it's there already. So you'll need just this and the V-band clamp and bolt. This will clamp around it and hold it on and we'll crawl under there and put this on. Okay, so I've been fighting this thing, putting it on, basically because this guy is just a little bit too short. So when this is open, you have to actually push in the fire rings. So this is a spring loader, this is a waste case. It's gonna be open just a little bit, but the, this compresses it up against the, um, the gate itself. So while pushing this in, it gives it just enough room to close your V-band clamp around and leaves only about, I don't know, just about that much thread in the thread onto it. So once it's once it's compressed, it'll be fine. I just can't get the thread started because I can't push it down hard enough and squeeze it. So I had to go out and I got me some stainless um, M6 bolts that are just a little bit longer to help out with this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on now. And unfortunately, um, I think even with two hands, this would have been difficult to do just because to get the thread started, it kept basically popping off and anyways I've been fighting this thing for about longer than you want to know <laughs> so let's go ahead and see if these work alright so the wastegate is installed looks good everything's nice and tight I went ahead and cinched up the other v-band I had on this bracket here as well so everything is nice and tight so now we get to move on to the downpipe so we're making tons of progress and the next piece of the puzzle is going to be to put on the downpipe I want to go ahead and test fit the downpipe Make sure it fits around the AC components, and if it does fit, we'll pull it back out and wrap it and put it back in. So that'll complete the hot side install, all back to the exhaust, and hopefully get the white pipe in, and uh, we're moving right along, man. Really tight fit. I know they say it will fit, so let's find out. Okay, fast forward a couple of days. Life's busy, man. What can I say? And I'm taking my sweet time on this. I really am taking my time and trying to do things methodically and slow. And I'm a busy man. But never fear, I've got some more work done here. Hey, it rhymes. So check this out. I've got a PTP lava wrap on. I went ahead and put the blanket on just to kind of, you know, put it on and see what it looks like, I guess. Um, we've got the PTP lava wrap here. So I wrapped it. I don't, can't say I did the, the best job on the planet here, guys, but it's not going anywhere. Um, the cable zip ties, the stainless zip ties. So this stuff, and just so you know, um, this stuff does have a right or wrong way. This is a two inch wrap. And I got a roll of it that went just about underneath the floorboard. It didn't doesn't quite cover the whole length of the downpipe. And that's fine. But um, you know, later on I may want to wrap the whole thing depending on how hot it really feels underneath the floorboards. But the main thing is I'm keeping the heat 
away from under the engine compartment and away from everything that's in its you know that's going to be in its way. Luckily, we don't have a lot of stuff in the way. Uh, we don't really have anything in the way other than the spark plug wires that are going to be going through here, and they'll be wrapped as well. So this is a PTP lava wrap. So this is the non-fiberglass kind of stuff, and it has um, an edge on it. So if you can see, it's got like a sewn woven edge. You want to make sure that's the exposed edge. There's a right and wrong way to put this. If you put it on this way, you'll leave the um, the other edge on and it could fray. So here it is. Let me show you the problems I've had. So you do know I'm retaining my AC and we already had to remove that line right there. It's laying over here. I'm going to have to get a custom line made for that guy, which is not a huge deal. Um, I may make one myself if I can find the right fittings. Um, and we'll snake it, you know, from from the evaporator here, snake it back this way, up against the firewall, up away from the downpipe, then back to the connector there. Um, it goes inside the, the um, you know, the HVAC box inside the cab. Um, we also have our condenser here, and the condenser was absolutely in the way, and I tried everything I could. The first thing I did was try to move the whole thing. I actually wedged a crowbar in the bracket. I didn't want to pull on the condenser itself, and I want to bust the fittings, but I was able to bend it move it out a little bit, that kind of worked. The best thing I had luck with was actually taking a bar between here and putting leverage on it like this, bending the whole uh, condenser that way, and that got it away from the bottom. Let me get a light so you can see this real quick. Okay, so the downpipe was hitting the condenser. The condenser sticks out along the frame rail there. If you don't have AC, this pipe is meant to hug right next to the frame rail, which it does perfectly. Now there's a, I don't know, 130, 32 inches of a gap there. It's just a little bit of a gap right there. But um, nonetheless, it was in the way with this and this was hitting it. So I moved it out of the way. It's not hitting anymore. It's awfully close, but it is not hitting. Um, same with this side. This side over here is just kissing the header, especially with the wrap on it. You can't see it, guys. I'm really, really sorry about this here. There we go. Yeah. So you can see it touching the back header on number four cylinder. And that's not the biggest part. The biggest problem I had... Oh, come on down here with me, guys. Yeah. Here we go. All right, the biggest problem I had was it hitting the floor right here in the corner. And that's not a huge deal again. I was able to... Basically, I, I did everything I could to move this thing over. And it's not horrible. In fact, it's, it's really low. It's not as far down as other people claim this kit puts it. But um, it was fixed with uh, a hammer. <laughs> so I did have a clearance the floor right there. There was a crown right here on the floor. And um, I was able to just kind of bean that in, you know, peen it in a little bit and bend it out. So that's okay. When we got room for it, it's not, it's not rubbing. It's not hitting anything. It's extremely solid, as you can see. So the next pieces we're going to be putting in the, um, the lighting's horrible. We're going to be putting in the uh, Y pipe that I purchased from on three and it will go into here actually I purchased it from LMR but it's on three pucks so it'll go into here and connect to my exhaust back there so that'll connect my downpipe here to the exhaust so that's cool right so it's over here and we'll get this laid out and I'll show it to you in a second but nonetheless the downpipe is on um, God, the turbo kit's coming along. It really is. It's, it's coming along pretty well. So, I'm getting really excited. I'm going to end this video. Okay, guys, listen, that wraps it up for this video. Listen, there's so much more coming. I've got tons of footage already shot. I, it's, it's unreal. This is a week or two worth of video footage I've already pretty much filmed. I'm just trying to edit it so much, I cannot show you everything because the videos would be so long. This one's already 30 minutes long, which is really long. And if I showed you everything, it would be days long. No kidding. Uh, because every little thing that I run into, I want to show you guys. I know these are long, and I know I'm talking a lot. And again, I, it's just a lot of stuff. I don't want to miss details. I want to show you guys exactly everything I'm running into installing this. So the next video, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do a wide pipe install video. We're going to finish up the exhaust. That'll be cool. We're going to install the uh, fuel injectors. I got BPK fuel injectors we're going to be putting on. That's going to be a separate video. And then we're going to be pulling on the, the cold side. The cold side is completely next. 
And then we're gonna bolt everything back up as far as the intake's concerned. And it's gonna be pretty well done. At that point, we're gonna be moving right into the engine management system. We'll be installing the mega squirt, or micro squirt, excuse me. And then we're gonna tuning, and we should be running. Now we're also gonna go over in detail the vacuum lines. I know that's one thing I haven't touched upon is the vacuum line routing. We had to run vacuum lines to the blow off valve and to the wastegate and the boost controller and also to the gauge inside the cab. So the vacuum line system in itself is a whole video in itself. So we'll be doing that as well. So again, if you've stuck with me this long, this stupid long video, thank you so much for watching. Um, thanks for being here, seriously. Guys, make sure uh, to follow me on Instagram. I'm posting those little things here and there, what I'm working on. You kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. Um, like I said, these videos have been pre recorded. I got a lot of editing to do. Uh, make sure to subscribe so you get updates on when more videos are coming out. And that's cool. And also make sure you check out the link below. I have a link of a Google spreadsheet of everything that I have purchased for this on Free Turbo Kit and the prices and the links to purchase them just so you get an idea of how much this is costing me. So I'm keeping tabs of the cost on this and I'm sharing it with you guys. And you can check that out down below, so make sure you look at that. Otherwise, we will see you really soon on the wide pipe install and the VVK fuel of rail install and everything else that's coming along. So guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers, happy Friday.